today's uh, Acker Zoo Lunch and Learn. My name is Kate and I'm one of our wild animal keepers here um, at the Acker Zoo and I work in our education department. Um, today we will be talking about our creepy crawlies. Um, so a lot of animals that some people don't like. Um, hopefully after this program maybe you'll find a little bit more respect for them. Maybe not necessarily let them into your house. Um, but at least maybe like them a little bit better, um, for, at least here at the zoo. Um, we are going to start off with our Chilean rose hair tarantula. I'll get her out. Um, and this is Desi. Like I said, she's a Chilean rose hair tarantula. And they get that name because some of the hairs along their legs are slightly pink in color. And obviously they're um, from Chile. These guys are ground dwelling, so what they do is they actually will find burrows and kind of net themselves with their uh, web into their burrows. Here at the zoo, ours use their web actually to molt, and that is because they have an exoskeleton. Um, so like our skeleton is on the inside, theirs is on the outside. Um, so they're nice and hard, you can kind of see it a little bit easier um, in her midsection there. Um, and they molt, and it depends on the tarantula, Desi molts about every other year. And what they do is they actually form a whole new skeleton and actually pop out of this one. During that process, they can actually regenerate their legs. Um, so if they were to have an accident and lose one of their legs, they can actually regrow them. Um, get her moved a little bit so you guys can see her. Um, and that's because they have eight legs and they like to keep their eight legs. It helps them. Now it might look like she has 10, these two in the front are actually not legs at all. They're called petty palps. And that helps her if she's needing to move substrate or if she's trying to eat um, because her uh, fangs are actually right underneath there. If I can get her up so you can see her fangs. Um, tarantulas use these fangs to help them eat. So they actually inject venom. All spiders are venomous, even the ones in your house. Um, they inject venom into their prey and it kind of basically turns their insides to mush uh, and they just kind of slurp it up that way. Um, she also has a couple extra appendages here on her back end. Those are her spinnerets, and that's what they use to um, make their webbing with. Um, like I said, she uses her webbing primarily for molting. Um, they don't have to burrow or anything here because they're in their own house and there's nothing that will attack them or anything. Um, So these guys, um, a lot of people think they're creepy, um, and a lot of people don't like spiders in their house, but they're actually good for the environment. Um, they're actually kind of good to have in your house because they keep the insect population under control. Um, so if you don't like things like ants or mosquitoes, uh, spiders will actually eat those for you. So it's kind of a trade-off. You know, do you want lots and lots of smaller insects, or do you want arachnids like our spider um, to help control those population? Um, and they're not. They're not slimy, they're not anything like that. Um, she's perfectly uh, dry, easy to handle um, <laughs> with uh, in my hand right now. She does have a little bit of kind of pinchers on her the end of her feet. You can kind of see them if she zooms in really well. Um, and that's what she's using to hold on. Um, they don't hurt. Um, what they actually use for defense is their hair. So she will actually use her back legs and rub her back end here and the hairs will come off. Um, and they are irritants for predators because um, they kind of stick in like needles and then they itch. Um, but she's very relaxed, she's used to being handled. Um, so we don't want to encourage that behavior because I don't want an itchy hand. And we also don't want her um, obviously to be stressed out. Do we have any questions coming up? Uh, no, so just not to drop her. <laughs> okay. Yes, I won't drop her. <laughs> so she's free to move as she wants. Um, she can go anywhere in my hand. Obviously, we don't want to let her loose in the house or in the room. Um, she actually does live in this room. We have a brand new enclosure for her. Um, unfortunately, it is off exhibit. Um, it is down in our education area. So both of our tarantulas live in education and she guys won't be able to see them. But if we don't have any questions about the tarantula, um, I will be putting her back um, and we'll move on to our next creepy crawly. And I believe Elena wanted me to tell you the tarantula is her favorite animal. Now, a lot of people say that it's their favorite, but 
What kind of species uh, I've been, I was asked? She's a Chilean rose hair tarantula. Um, you see them a lot of times in captivity because uh, they are pretty docile um, and easy to handle. All right, so we're going to move on to our next. We're kind of going smallest to largest. Our next creepy crawly actually doesn't really crawl at all because she has no legs. <clears throat> and she is Reggie. She is our ball python. Um, and like I said, these are all uh, animal ambassadors. And Reggie here is about 15 years old. And ball pythons have been known actually to live 30s to 40s. Um, so she's about middle age. She is full size. Um, so they are not one of the largest pythons. Um, they're kind of one of the smaller, medium pythons. Um, she is a bit larger than what a male would be. So females are a little bit larger and that is just because they have to grow the eggs. Um, and then they also lay the eggs and then they will wrap around them to help kind of keep them warm um, and kind of protect them. These guys are an African species. So you might have seen her out with our new uh, African area this summer. Um, they live in the shrubland. So they are colored to be able to pick up the sun when they're out basking and also to kind of hide in that grassy, uh, dry grass area. A lot of people see them in different colors and that is because they're called morphs um, because in captivity, we've actually um, bred them like crazy. Um, and there's several, almost a hundred different morphs, um, different colorations, different patterns. Um, and that is just something that humans have done, kind of messing with their genetics. Um, but this is a standard what you'd find in the wild. And you can see as we zoom up on her head, she does have these uh, almost holes in the side of her snout. And those are heat seeking pits. Um, so she can actually use that to find food in the wild. Uh, Reggie here, however, doesn't have to find food. Uh, we provide it for her. Um, she gets two rats um, every 14 days. Um, they don't have to eat as often as we do and that is because they're cold blooded. So they don't have to maintain things like temperature and things like that. They actually rely on whatever it is outside. Um, so right now she's about 73 degrees because that's what it is in this room. Um, her holding, uh, where she lives, her bedroom, it goes anywhere from about 75 to 95. Um, that's just to mimic the normal temperatures that she would find um, in Africa. And you can see she's out and exploring. She does have her little tongue going and she uses that to explore and to smell. Um, so they have what's called a uh, Jacobson's organ on the roof of their mouth. And as she flicks her tongue, it goes over that and she can basically taste the air and smell. So she's checking out my cameraman right now. <laughs> now a lot of people think that snakes are slimy. Um, they are not. Even if they come right out of water, they're just wet, they're not slimy. And that it usually is because they have really shiny scales. So she's pretty uh, smooth scale. So a lot of times in the light, daylight, um, bright light, you can see that they are very shiny. And I think that's why people think uh, they are slimy, uh, but they are not. She's perfectly dry. There's no slime on my hands. Um, I know snakes kind of get a bad rap um, on a lot of cultures, but there are other cultures uh, that actually, um, they can mean rebirth and, you know, health and all kinds of things. Um, so it's only some cultures that find them kind of negative. So we have mentioned they eat uh, rats. Mm -hmm. Anything else that they eat? Um, it depends on species of snake. Um, they have actually found that wild ball pythons will eat things like birds. Um, they'll eat small vermin, you know, voles, other rats, rodents, things like that. Um, pretty much anything they can fit into their mouth. Um, and they can actually eat something twice as big as their body. So about that big. Um, and they can just do that. They, their jaw kind of comes apart. Um, and they're able to kind of squeeze things down even though this is relatively small. Um, so just like with the tarantula, they do keep the vermin population down. So I know a lot of people don't like rodents, uh, especially in their house. So snakes actually control that. Um, so it's kind of, again, just kind of a toss up of which would you rather have a lot of rats or one snake. Um, obviously you can't find these guys in our backyard, but there are lots of different Ohio snakes you can find. Um, usually garter snakes, um, smaller snakes like that, um, that help control grub populations in your gardens, in your flower beds. Um, so they're actually very beneficial. Um, and most of the time when people are bit uh, is because they startle the snake 
or they're trying to get the snake to move and it doesn't want to move. Um, so if you see a snake that's out and it's usually basking to kind of warm up its temperature, uh, you don't want to mess with it because it can bite um, at that point. They also musk, uh, which is a very smelly substance that comes out of their rear end. Um, and you pretty much just throw away your clothes at that point because uh, it's pretty smelly. Do they ever eat other snakes? Some species of snakes do eat other snakes. Um, a lot of your king snakes will. Uh, your king cobra does. Uh, ball pythons do not eat other snakes generally. Usually they're the ones being preyed upon. Um, can't think of any more questions about parents. So Reggie here, I have another snake who's slightly different. Reggie lays eggs, like most people think reptiles do. Um, and then they do kind of guard them. Um, like I said before, they will bask and warm themselves up and then curl around their eggs to warm up the eggs. Um, and there is some um, evidence that they will twitch their muscles. We're not entirely sure how much that helps muscles, sorry. Um, but our next snake actually does something completely different. Are okay. we ready to switch snakes? I think we, we are. more questions about Reggie? We are ready. All right. So I'm gonna try to get her off. Um, she is a constrictor. So she is constricting my hand, not to eat it, just to hold on. Um, she knows I'm too big to eat, but she's also very used to being handled. All right. And these coolers are just temporary housing for them. They have much larger appropriate houses, um, but obviously I can't bring an entire terrarium here. All right, so we're moving up to our largest lady. So this is Maddie. Like. <laughs> She is very large. <laughs> so Maddie, here, I'm going to put her on the table just because she's about 30 pounds of awkward snake um, and it's kind of hard to hold her. Uh, so like I said, she's about 30 pounds, about seven to eight feet long, and she is a Dumeril's ground boa. As it looks nice to be the sensitive. Um, so these guys live in Madagascar, um, typically, like I said, on the ground, and you can see her nice coloration looks like the leaf litter and things like that on the ground so she can hide. And these guys can actually eat uh, lemurs and things like that um, in their natural habitat. Maddie, of course, just eats rats here. Uh, much larger rats than what Reggie does. Um, like I said, she has a slightly different way of giving birth than what Reggie did. She's actually um, viviparous, which means that she gives live birth. Um, so I know a lot of people don't think that reptiles do give live birth. They think they're egg laying, um, like we're taught um, in the lower grades in science. Um, generally they are, but boas here actually give live birth. So what happens is um, she will incubate them inside of herself um, and then they come out fully formed um, and just kind of ready to go. Uh, so there's no real parental uh, care with them. Uh, Maddie here, uh, like I said, she's a female. She's one of our older ladies. Um, she's about 32. Um, they can live 30s to up to 40 or so. Generally, snakes live about 25 to 35. Um, she is still going strong. Um, at 32, she'll be 33, I believe, in August. She's just out. Does she school. ever eat live food? So Maddie here, yes, is our exception. All of our animals um, in education do eat frozen thawed rats. Um, however, Maddie came to us at about 12 years old and she was already on um, live rats. And we have tried and tried and tried um, and she refuses to eat frozen um, because it's safer for her. So she actually does eat live rats um, every three weeks. Uh, and generally I'm the one that feeds them to her, uh, which is not always the most fun. Since she is getting older, we unfortunately do have to hand feed her. Um, she has, however, never attacked anybody, thankfully. Um, and that is just for her safety, because a lot of times with live rats, they will actually attack the snake. Um, Does this type of snake ever eat rabbit? They can. Um, she can handle a full-size rabbit. We do not feed uh, that to her here, um, but she can if she wanted to. Um, it is large. She is large enough to handle it. How, how long is the incubation period before her babies are born live versus eggs? Um, uh, it depends on species. I'm actually going to have my off-camera person Google for numerals how long that is. I believe it's about two months or so. Um, I 
entirely sure. So I will get that answer as soon as she can look it up um, and then let you know. But it's all species dependent. Because um, obviously a small garter snake, which also gives live birth, doesn't need to create as large of a baby as what these guys do. Four to eight months, depending on the temperature. Okay, so it's four to eight months, depending on temperature. Reptiles are very temperature dependent. Um, so if it's a cooler temperature, it's going to take longer um, than if it's a warmer temperature. So obviously in captivity or in, you know, in the zoo setting, we can adjust that um, and make it a higher temperature versus you know, whatever the rainforest happens to be at for her. And she is about 30 pounds. Now she, a lot of people consider this a large snake. Um, it's, I consider it a medium snake. Um, there are larger snakes than her. Um, so again, a lot of people think they're creepy because they are so large. Um, she, other than trying to get off the camera, um, is a very nice snake. She's very docile um, and kind of lets us do whatever we want. So she, um, obviously you don't want to put her around your neck or anything. Um, but she knows I'm too big for her to attack. Um, right now, she, I think, just is looking for somebody warm to sit on. There you go. So you can see on her face, she doesn't have the heat pits that Reggie did. Um, and that is just a difference in the type of snake. Um, so doom rolls and don't go off the table. Um, don't need that necessarily. They're more of an ambush where they just kind of sit and wait. Um, and then they use their size to constrict. Um, around larger prey. Um, so like I said, she's a constrictor, Reggie was a constrictor. Um, snakes also come in venomous. Um, so just like our tarantulas are venomous, um, our snakes, um, some snakes are venomous. They're not poisonous, um, so there is a difference. Venom means that they bite you um, and inject the venom. Poisonous is like your poison dart frog where if you ingest them, you will get sick. Um, or I suppose lick them or you know get it on your hands or anything like that. So we don't have any venomous reptiles here. Um, some other zoos do, you just have to take extra precautions. Um, but with venomous snakes, uh, there's usually some differences like with their eyes and head shape um, and then their scales around their tail. Obviously, if you're out in the wild, you're not going to pick up a wild snake um, to look at its tail scales to see if it's venomous or not. Because um, we do actually have venomous snakes here in Ohio. Um, they are further south, though. They're not, they don't come up as high um, in the state. I'm trying to think. Will she become aggressive if she knows you are scared? I don't think she would. Um, this is just based on her in particular. I don't can't say for other snakes. Um, Cause we, I mean, we have new people that come in and handle um, our large snakes sometimes. And she's never shown any aggression unless it's close to feeding time. Um, she and her other bigger snake, uh, they get hangry just like people do. Um, so when it's close to feeding time, they'll get more active and they're more likely to be grumpy. So we generally don't handle them. Um, as much, but usually if you show them that it's not feeding time, they're pretty much ready just to go and kind of hang out with us like this. Um, but as I've never been afraid of her, so I can't say if she would or not, but I have seen her interact with other people who aren't snake people, um, and she's never really been aggressive towards anybody. Okay, Alright guys, so that um, kind of concludes our uh, lunch and learn today. Um, I don't think there's any more questions. We, you know, we do have two oh, more. Yeah. Um, Isaiah, age four, wants to know if she sees well with her eyes. Um, so these guys rely more on their sense of smell. Um, they do have, obviously, they have some vision. It's not the greatest. Um, her being older, um, we think it's even less than normal, which is why we hand feed her. Um, but they do primarily rely on their sense of smell. Um, they also don't really have hearing. Um, she has no external ears, so no like ear holes. Um, they have kind of rudimentary, rudimentary inner ears, um, which is more for like hearing of vibrations, um, like rodents scampering through forests and things like that. So pretty much scent. 
All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and conclude for today. Thank you for joining me and all of my creepy crawlies for our Lunch and Learn. Hopefully you learned a little bit to make them a little less scary. Um, they are pretty fascinating creatures um, as long as they have, you know, decent respect. All right, guys, tune in, I think, next week for our next Lunch and Learn, and have a good day.